Good morning and welcome once again to Digital Look TV. Joining us today once again, fortunately, is Bill Hubbard. He's Chief Economist at Markets.com. Bill, thank you very much for being with thank us. Thank you very much for inviting me. What a lovely day we have here on the veranda. It's a beautiful yes. British summer morning. <laughs> exactly. Okay, let's talk about the largest economy in the world, the most important economy in the world, the United States economy. We had Q1 GDP day, the second revision out yesterday, quite a bit of a crater. It was revised down second time around to minus 2.9% quite a bit worse than what people were expecting. Does that show that the U.S. economy is not quite as strong as one might think or not? Well, I'm going to have to go back to years ago when I was a TV presenter at Bloomberg and we got GDP numbers out one time. And, and, and as I, I got offset, my producer came to me and basically said, well, your reaction wasn't what we expected. I, I said, well, you know, I'm a trader, okay? I got 10 seconds to look at something. Is that a good number or a bad number? Okay. Mm -hmm. I said, you, your background is being an economist. Therefore, you have at least three chances in the space of three months to evaluate what's going on. And I think as we saw this, the bond market took it as positive. The 10 year went down to 2.5%. The, the equity market said, well, uh, moving right along, that's old right. data. And we had, again, mm -hmm. record sets on Wall Street on decent volume. But the key thing, I think, excuse me, to look at that data. Remember, the quarter started with a continuation of the incredibly cold winter that we had had in both okay. February and March. So mm -hmm. the consumer basically was staying home, freezing to death. And also, I think, one thing to look through, I guess the economists were working under the assumption that the second quarter would strong off strong because of the introduction of, quote, Obamacare, right. feeling that the consumers would be spending hundreds of millions of dollars increasing their coverage which was, was becoming mm -hmm. long. Well as we saw, excuse me, the first six, eight weeks of that was sort of you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the system didn't work and you couldn't log online. Right, so, so I think you saw a dramatic reduction in what they were assuming to be consumer spending. But I think one of the things, if you look through it, capital expenditures were okay, okay. housing was okay. Yeah. So the simple fact is the market, I haven't seen today what you know the, the gurus have reevaluated. Mm -hmm. But I mean, yesterday when we were, the, the Bloomberg consensus I think was minus 1.8 is the final Just about, number. Yes. You know, they were saying, well, you know, Q2 could be 3%. Well, let's just say if they're still just expecting 3% to 3.2% in Q2, well, all of a sudden this will be even a more dramatic improvement since mm -hmm. the number finally came in at minus 2.9. So the simple fact is you saw the dollar come under some pressure, but you saw very strong buying in the equity markets. And again, the bond market saying, well, you know, it, it means that the Fed Reserve is truthful, that we probably won't get any kind of rate hike till mid probably probably late 2015 early 2016 okay so then that's a very important point so or rather two points on the one hand the US economy the US economic recovery is for real yes it that's is. critical but following on from that or despite that given the nature of the US economy uh, exactly how it works the dynamics that work there the Fed is right to be patient yes, with the first very rate much hike. So. okay now it, let's compare that with the UK okay. well but let's go back to now All right. next week all right, next Thursday, because mm -hmm. of the holiday next Friday, mm -hmm. we will get non-farm payrolls. My call now is plus 215,000, which would be slightly over the, the, the one-year average, which is 196. We could see a drop of 6.2. Now, one of the things, and we talked about this earlier, was there are still probably 400,000 plus hmm. uh, potential, you know, uh, people looking, who've just given up, okay? Now, All right. Even if the economy starts to improve slightly, we were talking about you know what, what happens you know with the potential mm -hmm. of U.S. exporting oil. Well, if this Keystone LX comes in, this could be several hundred thousand jobs near term. So the mm -hmm. potential is there, and again, the, the the equity markets are looking at the potential of disenchanted workers being able to come back looking for you know for, for jobs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you believe that's something you take into account in the next twelve months? Perhaps? Yes. Yeah, okay. I do. That is critical. That's extremely important. Thank you. Um, all right. We'll follow on from the Excel pipeline, this entire oil theme. Yeah. Iraq. Yes. Medium term implications for the price of oil for Brent. But in particular, um, you gave you made a, how would I say this, an analogy <laughs> yeah. before the interview of for OPEC, Excel pipeline, U.S. I exports of oil. Well, I think one of the things that we have seen, okay, ever since, quote, fracking came into the, mm -hmm. the, the general conversation, you know, we've had no problem with OPEC 
even thinking about reducing it. I mean, even like Saudi Arabia, I think in the last day or two, has said, you know, don't worry, you know, it's there. Also, the right. fact is, if negotiations, political negotiations with Iran continue, I mean, Iran has the potential to be probably the second or third largest mm. producer of oil in that area, okay? Mm -hmm. so, so that could help it, you know, and, and I think, you know, the decision by the Norwegian Central Bank, you know, last mm -hmm. week, where they became in far more dovish than being hawkish in the previous meeting, you know, and, and their basic assumption then was Brent crude could go to 120. I mean, I think the last I look, it's still hovering around 115. Indeed. And, and it's not... 114 you know, this morning. Okay. So, so you know, if nothing else, we've seen at least a slight reduction, whether it's profit taking or this, that, or the other. And, mm -hmm. and again, you know, getting ready for the weekend and next week, you know, we have a long weekend, you know, mm -hmm. with both U.S. and Canada being closed next Friday. So, you know, mm -hmm. it's a situation where... Uh, I guess here in the UK, we're not following the World Cup anymore, but, mm -hmm. but you know, we're now in, into Wimbledon. Okay. So the medium-term prospects for oil for Brent are more or less under control? Yes, I think so. And geopolitically, I guess perhaps the void that Iraq might leave behind will be filled in. And also that threat to OPEC's production, to its, uh, I guess you could say, omnipotence, mm. uh, will check it. Yes. And, and I think... OPEC has been smart enough to realize, you know, we'd rather get 108, 110, 112 hmm. dollars a barrel rather than 80, mm -hmm. you know. And I mean, there are people out there that are talking that, you know, that, that, that Keystone comes on, fracking comes on, you know, I mean, they're, they're one or two, you know, noted institutions that feel that, you know, oil could go to 80 bucks a barrel. Right. So a good threat is sometimes useful. Yes. All right. Going back to the U.S. Federal Reserve, Janet Yellen, Fed Chair. She's doing the correct thing by being patient. Yes. Mr. Carney, he seems to have, he and the MPC before the Treasury Select Committee, they seem to have backed off yes. slightly from his words at the mansion, during the Mansion House speech. Should he too be patient like the Fed or not? Yes and no. Let's go back to, I mean, well, he hadn't even been there a year yet. I think it was mm -hmm. July of last year. And, and, and I hope you know, pro Carney fans will not think I'm anti Carney, but mm. let's be perfectly realistic, okay? Being governor of the Bank of Canada <laughs> is mm. slightly different than being the Bank of England, okay? We're talking okay. about, you know, an economy unto itself, because remember, so much of the Bank of Canada's direction comes from its southern neighbor, okay? Mm -hmm. And they just sort of act or react. So I, I think He's growing into the job. I think one of the things that, that he has to learn is to be, you know, a little bit more political. And I guess it goes back to probably 25 years ago okay. when Alan Greenspan was chairman of the Fed. And each, mm. every six months he has to go before the, what they call the Humphrey Hawkins. Yes. And he made a comment before the Senate. And he said, well, Senator, I'm not trying to be derogatory, but if you understood what I just said, you must not have been listening. <laughs> okay, and I think right. maybe the situation where possibly now, you know, he's listening to members uh, of mm -hmm. the BOE MPC. And I, and I know there was a comment yesterday, I guess, from one of the parliamentarians saying, you know, wait, wait a minute, you know, he's sort of like a, you sound like, what do you call him, a, a scorned boyfriend or something like mm -hmm. that? That, he, you know, well, I'm not going to talk to you again. But I think one of the things he's having to look, you know, I'll look at it. But, mm -hmm. but I think the key thing is what you'll have to look at is the market, the slack. And, and, and he is no different, whether it be the Federal Reserve mm -hmm. or the Bank of England. The, the economy has improved in reference to employment slash unemployment far quicker mm -hmm. here, much quicker okay, okay. Than, than anybody expected. Two last things, if you allow me, about the Bank of England, sure. the NPC. First of all, some economists say that there's a 40% chance of CPI in the UK and finishing the year below 1%. Do you believe that? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, I don't see any problem with inflation. But now, those may be the people that, as I just mentioned, let's say Iraq is settled today. Mm -hmm. Iran comes on at full force, okay? Okay. OPEC then, you know, then we could have. And as I say, maybe it goes back even early part of this year. I mean, there were one or two uh, major institutions, okay, mm -hmm. well-known institutions. We're talking the real possibility with deflation being the problem, not inflation, where we could see oil well below, finishing the year well below, like in the 85 to 90 bucks a barrel. Okay? Interesting. Well, that would totally be deflationary rather than inflation. Mm -hmm. Now, also one of the things we mentioned earlier is that, let's just say, and the market now is still implying, I think, 
60-ish percent probability mm -hmm. of, a, of a November mm -hmm. hike, or no, 90 percent, 60 percent probability. Now that may have changed in the in the last day or two because of the data. Mm -hmm. But what is wrong with the Bank of England saying, "Well, we are going to start raising rates in November"? But what's wrong with 10 basis points? Does it have just because you know it's been 25 basis points since mm -hmm. you know King Canute? was around in 4000 BC. What's wrong with 10 basis points? What's wrong with 15 basis points? Or, or as Greenspan told us years ago, the market tells us what the rights are, rates are, we just react accordingly. Okay? And so what difference does it make whether it's 10 or 15 basis points Certainly rather than not. 25? No. Okay, going back to your previous point, yeah. if oil, Brent, fell towards $80 a barrel, $90 a barrel, dollar would go higher? Yes. Okay, interesting. Okay. Also, the BBA, yeah. British Bankers Association, yes two days ago, they put out a statement, uh, more or less telling Carney that don't rush into yeah. anything. Are they right? Uh, let's just say <coughs> politicians <coughs> shouldn't get involved in business and vice versa, okay? Okay. Uh, and, and so everybody has the right to make any kind of statement, okay? okay and and, fair and what is it worth? You know, that and two pounds gets you on the London Underground. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it's a question of... My feeling, I think we've talked about this before, depending on who you believe, there's anywhere from like 8.2 to 11.4 million hmm. mortgage holders here in the UK. Now, we know, even with the price of oil, they're probably going to pay another, in this much inflation data, you'll probably find maybe 3 to 4p per hmm. liter that they paid more for, for petrol. Well, that, a so if petrol's going up, the credit card's the same, this, it, we're getting ready for winter. Hmm. So all of a sudden, if you're having to pay, I don't know, 50, 100, 150, and you're still getting wage is well below even the current inflation right you know that, that's mm -hmm. just that's just money that's coming out of your pocket and where are you going to replace it by not buying a new pair of shoes and not you know going out to the best restaurant so okay so steady as you go for mr yeah, Barney. i think so but 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 i mean i do feel mm -hmm. looking at the data now that we will get a rate hike prior to year end okay okay and, and very possibly in november yeah, I think so. Uh, December is always a, a, a bad month, okay? Mm -hmm. Christmas and stuff like that. You don't want to, you know. Now, I mean, the high streets would be, let's just say they decided to do 25 basis points. Mm -hmm. The high streets would go ballistic. And mm -hmm. That's a word I can use on television. I, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to use the other word. No, best that, not. They'd go crazy if mm -hmm. all of a sudden there was a rate hike before the Christmas holidays. <laughs> I have no doubt they would. <laughs> yeah. Bill Kubert, Chief Economist, Markets.com. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. As always. And that's all from us here today at Digital Look TV. Thank you very much for your time.